So here we're looking at an, an anterior view of a right forearm, and I've always found it easiest, if you're looking at the muscles of the forearm, to start here in the cubital fossa at the distal tendon of the biceps brachii. Now if you start there and you work medially, you move this way towards the little finger side, then you're going to hit the flexors and the superficial ones. The first one you're going to hit is pronator teres. Now on this model, it's pretty clear, easy to see. On a specimen, often this connective tissue here that comes off the biceps brachii, often that will, will run over these muscles here and blend with the fascia that surrounds them and it will often tend to pull this next muscle, the flexor carpi radialis, a bit laterally. And when that gets pulled a bit laterally, it can cover the pronator teres. And it, particularly if you're looking at a small specimen, it can mean pronator teres is quite hard to actually see. So here it looks very clear and obvious that it's the first one and you can't miss it, but sometimes on the specimens it's trickier to spot. So just bear that in mind and make sure you really have actually found that what you think you have. Okay, so starting at the cubital fossa, first of the flexors we find is pronator teres, then moving more medially, flexor carpi radialis, and that's usually got a long but relatively thick and broad tendon that attaches here at the wrist on the just lateral of the midline of the wrist there. Then often, but not always, we'll find palmaris longus. Now 14% of people don't have one of these. And sometimes they won't have it on both of their upper limbs, and sometimes they don't have it on just one. So in surface anatomy classes, it's heaps of fun trying to find who's, who's got one and who hasn't. Now on this model though, it's, it's here, and they're showing it as being a reasonable size muscle belly and a fairly big tendon. In, in actual fact, it's often very small muscle belly and very thin and a very skinny tendon that attaches up here into this structure, which is the flexor retinaculum, which you'll find at the wrist. So if, and it's pretty much in the middle here of the, of the forearm. Um, so just bear in mind that it's not always there. So it's, once you've seen a few specimens that have one and don't have one, it's quite simple. But when you're first looking at specimens, make sure you check and remember that it's not always going to be present. So pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and then we have flexor carpi ulnaris, which is right on that medial border of the forearm. The distal attachment here is very much on the medial side of the wrist. It's right on the edge. So that's flexor carpi ulnaris. And those are the first four um, of the flexor muscle group. Remember, there's eight flexor muscles, uh, and those are the four um, superficial ones, so they make up the first layer. Now the second layer, if we just remove some of those first layer ones there, the second layer is just one muscle. So there's four in the first layer, but only one in the second. The second layer is flexor digitorum superficialis. So it flexes the digits this time, not the carpal. So if we have a look at the hand, we can see muscle belly of flexor digitorum superficialis. Here there will be four tendons, and they run to, to digits two, three, four, and five. Now let's have a closer look here at the hand because it's, it's well worth it and the, the model is quite detailed. And what we can see in the hand is these tendons here are flexor digitorum superficialis. Now notice that they split. So here looking at the fourth digit, you can see that tendon splits and goes either side of the tendon that was deep to it until then. So here on the third digit we can see flexor digitorum superficialis splits and then another tendon emerges from in between them. Okay, So this is flexor digitorum superficialis. We can see it again here. If someone doesn't, this is palmaris longus tendon here, if someone doesn't have a palmaris longus, these tendons will be more visible, obviously. So sometimes you think one of them might be palmaris longus. So you just have to be careful when you're looking for that. Now that means then, if that's the only muscle in that layer, we can move down now to the next layer by removing the, uh, or at least most, of the flexor digitorum superficialis there. Now the next layer has two muscles. So we've had four in the first layer, one in the second. There's two in the third layer. 
On the lateral side, or thumb side, here we have flexor pollicis longus. And you can see the muscle fibres there going in on an angle towards the medial part of the muscle and the tendon is here. So that's flexor pollicis longus. And as the name suggests, remember pollicis is to do with the thumb, that's going to flex the thumb. So if we look in the ha at the hand here, we can see a long tendon running along to the end of the thumb. So that is the tendon there of flexor pollicis longus. It's going to flex the thumb. Now medial to that in the forearm, here we have muscle fibres of flexor digitorum profundus. So we've had a superficial uh, digital flexor. This is the deep one. So pr profound as in deep. This is flexor digitorum profundus. So we can see that there's, you can see the tendons fairly early on. So there's the muscle belly is proximal here in the forearm. Once you get to the mid forearm, we're looking at tendons. And eventually there'll be four of them when we get closer to the hand. So that's flexor digitorum profundus. And as you've probably already figured out, when we look more closely at the hand, as we did uh, before, when we were looking at flexor digitorum superficialis, the tendon that comes out from in, betwe uh, in between the two bits of superficial superficialis here is profundus. So flexor digitorum profundus, you can see this tendon running along to the distal phalanx there of digit three. So this is superficialis here, it's, it's superficial to profundus, and here distally though profundus becomes more superficial, comes out from in between superficialis. So that's the two flexor digitorum muscles there. Now that means that there's one layer to go. So we've had four in the first layer, one in the second, two in the third. There's only one muscle in the fourth layer and we can't see it on this model, but it would be just here. So it's distal in the forearm, it's going to be deep to flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum profundus and the fibres run across like that. So they run from the distal radius to the ulna on the anterior aspect and that's pronator quadratus. Now on many of the specimens, you can gently and carefully move the pollicis and or the, the flexor digitorum profundus aside and find the pronator quadratus. But equally, we have some deep specimens where some of these structures or, or sometimes all of them have been removed and you can just clearly see pronator quadratus sitting there on its own. So make sure you, you do get to see it. It's not on every specimen, but it is definitely possible to find it. So that's the flexors. Eight muscles, four layers. Now, if we move to the extensors, so the good news is there's only two layers, but the bad news is there's 12 muscles in them. So the first, um, more superficial layer, there are seven muscles. So if we start again at the distal tendon of the biceps brachii in the cubital fossa, but this time we move laterally, the first muscle we hit this time Brachioradialis. Now it's not an extensor, it's actually a flexor of the forearm at the wrist, but it's always grouped with the extensors, always considered to be part of the extensor group because it sits with them and it's innervated by the same nerve. So this first one we hit, Brachioradialis. Now on the model, there's a fairly clear line here um, dividing it from the next muscle, which is extensor carpi radialis longus. Then the one next to that is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So we can see those two muscle bellies here. So the three of them are sitting very close together here. So brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. Now, the tendons of those two extensor carpi radialis muscles are visible here uh, on the dorsal aspect of the hand and we can just see them here. So this one is extensor carpi radialis longus. It's attaching at the base of the second metacarpal. This one is extensor carpi radialis brevis. It's going to the third metacarpal. Now that's more detail than you need to know, but I'm just pointing out that they're these two here. So on most specimens and on, the model, on all the models that we have, you can fairly easily find those two tendons. Okay. Then, <coughs> if we go come back to the muscle bellies, so we've already found these first three, the next one we find is a pretty big central 
muscle belly here, that's extensor digitorum. And you can see here that it has three tendons that are going to digits two, three, and four. It also travels by a little tendinous slip here to digit five. So that's extensor digitorum, it's big, it's in the middle, and we're looking at a directly posterior point of view here. Now just next to that, on the medial side, we have extensor digiti minimi. So the little finger has its own extensor muscle, and there are two tendons running along the back of the hand here to go to that fifth digit. So that's extensor digiti minimi. Here on the model, there's a really clear line here dividing it from extensor digitorum a long, long way back. On the specimens, you may only be able to tell it apart from digitorum from about here uh, distally. Okay, so back here, you might not, more proximally, you might not be able to, to spot the difference between digitorum and digitime minimi. If we keep moving medially, we come to extensor carpi ulnaris. And then lastly, up here near the elbow, we have the small forearm extensor Anconius. So what's this one? What's this one right here next to extensor carpi ulnaris? Good point. Is it supinator? No. This is flexor carpi ulnaris. So what we've done is we've gone right around the extensors and we're back on the flexors. If we turn this one this way, hey look, that's flexor carpi ulnaris. And then we can see the other flexor muscles here. So remember, flexor carpi ulnaris is right on the medial border. And the extensor carpi ulnaris is uh, going to be right next to it there. So the two carpi ulnaris muscles, the extensor, which is more on the back, and the flexor, which is closer to the front, they're right next to each other. So don't get confused. What, if you go right around, you're going to end up on the other side. Okay, so that was the seven superficial extensors. Let's have a look then, let's remove a couple of them and have a look at some of the deeper ones. Now here we've got, we've just taken off brachioradialis and the two extensor carpi radialis muscles and deep to them we find supinator. So supinator is proximal in the forearm, it's only in the proximal half and here it is here, deep to brachioradialis. Now on some of the specimens you'll be able to just move brachioradialis aside and see part of supinator. And we also have some deep specimens where the brachioradialis has been completely removed and you can just see supinator sitting there like it is here on its own. So that supinator is proximal. Now there are four more deep extensors uh, or muscles that are considered part of the extensor group, um, but they're deep. Now partly their muscle bellies are under deep to extensor digitorum and extensor digitime minima. So if you're looking at a model or specimen that still has these structures intact, you won't see all of them. You see some, but not all of them. Now the first one to emerge though between extensor digitorum and the extensor carpi muscles, extensor carpi radialis muscles, is the abductor pollicis longus. So that's abductor pollicis longus. It's pretty big in terms of muscle belly size, quite broad, and it has a broad tendon that attaches here at the first metatarsal. So it only comes to here, but it's quite a broad tendon here at the distal lateral wrist. Now just next to it is a much finer or, or thinner muscle, which usually has a very, very thin tendon. On the model they're showing it being a pretty big tendon. It's usually very thin. This is extensor pollicis brevis. So this one extends the thumb. It goes to the proximal phalanx. And on the, often on the specimens, you can see the tendon running up here all the way to the proximal phalanx, but not to the distal one. Now then there's a gap. There's a space there, and then there's another tendon. Now this tendon is also going to the thumb. goes to the distal phalanx, though, so it's extensor pollicis longus. So we've got abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and then extensor pollicis longus. Now, for some reason, when I first learnt these, I could not get my head around that. I just could not manage to say them all in the right order. I kept getting my abductors and stenses, extensors and longus and brevis mixed up. But what I found kind of by accident actually worked was instead of trying to say all the names out together, if I said 
oh, it goes abductor, extensor, extensor, longest, brevis, longest, somehow that works. So forget that. If that doesn't help you, forget it. But if something like that works for you, use it. It certainly helped me. So it goes abductor, extensor, extensor, longest, brevis, longest. Or if you can just remember, abductor pulse is longest, extensor pulse is brevis, extensor pulse is longest, then that's fine. Don't forget, you can always kind of cheat. If you know where the tendons go, you can always have a look and see which one is which by where the tendons go. Now lastly, with the extensor group, we've got one called extensor indices. Now the muscle belly is going to be under here, under extensor digiti minimi and digitorum just here, but the tendon goes to the index finger, which is what the indices part of the name in, uh, means. So here we've got two tendons going to the first, oh sorry, the first, the second digit here, the index finger. So here we've got one that's clearly attached to extensor digitorum. So the one on the thumb side, the one on the lateral side of the two that are there will be extensor digitorum. The one that's on the medial side, on the little finger side, there will be extensor indices. On some of the, on a deep specimen where these structures are removed, you will be able to see the muscle belly, but often on most specimens and models, you'll just be able to see the tendon here. So this one, lateral side is digitorum, this one, medial side, indices.